What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec, and we're going to be playing another round of Cyber Mayhem. We're still focusing on the blue team because streaming is not allowed on this platform, mainly because it's so easy to script out attacks from the red team because there's only so many ways you can pwn each machine. But on the blue team side, it's an open world. You can defend however you want. In this video, I'm going to show a lot of that, like doing unique defenses against a player to not completely patch the castle, but to try to make them adopt and try something that I don't expect. And maybe I'll learn from them just because I stopped the most common way of exploiting something. It's a lot of fun. Um, the main focus of this is going to be setting up Linux process logging with an application called Snoopy, which is just an LD preload program. We're going to get more into that in just a minute. But I also want to say this mode is now open up to everyone to play. Free users will get two games to play. So if you haven't played it yet, make sure you uh, play your two games with free and then upgrade to VIP to get some more games. So with all that being said, let's jump in. Before we get into any of that sexy and cool process monitoring stuff, watching people hack us in real time, I wanted to spend probably 15 to 20 minutes explaining the basics around what we're doing. Because when it comes to installing monitoring software, or actually any software at all, but especially monitoring software, you should know how it works under the hood. Because if you don't, you won't know what blind spots there are, and if attackers are abusing those blind spots, your monitoring solution doesn't see it, and you'll be none the wiser. So your monitoring solution just did absolutely nothing. In this video, we're going to be showing using a program called Snoopy, which is a LD preload logging solution. If we wanted to go probably full system, you should look into something like Audit D, but installing Audit D on these lab boxes in a timely manner can be a bit of a pain. So Snoopy is a bit of a hack job, which will let us install it super quick and give us pretty good insight. It is a LD preload thing, so we'll only have visibility of dynamically linked objects. And that's not going to be a big issue because the big thing right now is attackers living off the land using the programs on your computer. And all our programs on this are going to be dynamically linked. So when they use our own tools against us, we'll at least know they're using the tools against us. If they bring their own land with them, we will probably be blind to what they're doing. So that will be important to know. But with that being said, let's go in and show you what exactly LD preload is. First, I'm just going to make a folder to kind of stay organized called demo. And we're going to create a program in C that we're going to have both dynamically linked and statically linked. And all that program is going to do is give us a random number. So let's um, include the standard io.h and we'll also include standard lib and we can do int main void if i can type that's the main theme of these videos if i can ever type everything and we can say printf uh, random number and then we'll give it a digit and a line break and that we'll call rand and I need to install Vim. That's going to drive me insane not having Vim. But if we compile random.c to random, uh, we don't have GCC, so let's install GCC. And I'm going to install Vim, so my terminal's a bit better. I guess I was just using VI. Um, I didn't say install, but we'll install both of these. And now I'll be able to run our GCC command. So if we do GCC random.c.o random and then execute random, we'll get a random number. And it's the same every time because I forgot to put a seed. So, and now that I have them, we have better syntax hiling, but let's put a seed. So I'm going to do s rand and we'll just use the current epoch time as a seed. So I put that call to null. And then we should also include the time library. And when I do GCC now, we should get a random number. And if we run it like multiple times in the same second, the seed will be the same and we'll get the same random number. But for all intents and purposes, you can see when I execute this program, every time it's going to give me a different number. Now, if we specified the dash static option in this, we'll get the same exact program and it's going to do the same thing. Actually, I'm going to do um, static. And then when we don't use static, it's just going to be random. But both static 
and random are the same. If we call them in the same second, they'll even give us the same number. The difference between both random and static is one is statically linked, one is not. So you can see the difference in size. Because we have to include all the libraries in the program, it is 856K. The one where we don't include the programs is only 20K. We can do an LD command against this. What? Oh, wait, um, LDD is the command we can do. So we do LDD and we can see all the libraries this one program links. If we do it against static, we'll see uh, it's not a dynamic executable. So if we execute random, it's linking to all these to pull all the functions. Um, I'm guessing random is part of libc. So let's create a uh, program that just has the rand function. So I'm gonna go and create exploit.c, and all this is going to do is int rand void, and we're going to do a return 42, the answer to just absolutely everything. And now when I compile this, we'll do gcc exploit.c, I'm gonna specify dash shared, so it's a library, dash o, and I'm just gonna call this please subscribe dot so, and I'm going to do LD underscore preload is equal to slash home ipsec demo. Please subscribe dot so. I'm going to call random and we can see every time this is 42. If I do it with my static comp uh, compiled program, it's still going to be different. And we could have hijacked anything in this program. So if I go back to exploit.c, or actually um, random.c, we could have also hijacked this srand. So let's do that. Um, go back into exploit, and instead of rand, I'm just going to put srand, and when we compile this, we're going to run random again, and it's still unique every time, but when we say ld preload, it's gonna be this number every time because we're setting the seed to 42. Um, if we change that seed to like 9001 and do GCC and then LD preload, we'll see. Uh, I would assume it would have been different. I'm guessing it's just because we're not passing SRAN via the correct type of variable. Um, demo gods, I've gone way too far than my knowledge knows how to explain uh, off the top of my head. But that's the basics between uh, behind um, LD preload. So with that being known, we can go and begin installing Snoopy. And the reason why I'm using Ubuntu and not my Parrot VM is because whenever I do something, I try to mimic my target environment as close as possible. And in this case, I believe it's going to be Ubuntu that Hack the Box uses on a lot of servers. So that's why I'm using Ubuntu. I could have probably used my Parrot VM and it'll work just fine, mainly because Parrot, Ubuntu, Kalian are all based off of Debian. So it shouldn't matter that much, but Let's go install Snoopy. So let's open up Firefox. And when this opens, we can just search GitHub Snoopy and it should come up. So GitHub Snoopy, and it's gonna be the repository with A2O. And there's gonna be a lot of programs called Snoopy, but this is the one I use. So we can just look at how to install it. It says to install it this way is how they'd recommend it. And we can either install probably stable or through development. Um, I'm going to try probably going through dev. So let's install this one. So let's see. Yep. So I'm just going to wget this. Uh, let's make the directory Snoopy first. So go into Snoopy. Then run wget. And it wants install. So and and chmod. And then Snoopy install git master. Sure. Uh, this installation must be done as root. So we can do sudo snoopy install uh, git dash master. And hopefully everything installs fine.
it looks like it's installing a bunch of dependencies. So uh, I see like get, so cat, make, so. I'm going to fast forward the video and we'll resume when all this stuff is installed. So that script finished and now Snoopy is actually installed. I thought it was just going to compile, but it decided it wanted to install itself anyways. And that's always the danger of just blindly running scripts from like random repos, but it's fine. We could disable or enable it with Snoopy disable and Snoopy enable. So if we run Snoopy disable as root, it says uh, it removed the preload and your system should be restarted for cleanup. We could also enable it as well. And it probably wants us to reboot a machine. So it takes effect system wide. And this is important because when a program starts up, that's when it's going to insert itself. So if um, Apache is already running and we change the LD preload environment, that Apache is not going to get the new uh, um, configuration. So it should be restarted. Um, if we want to just look at how it is installed, we could do two things. We could just do a witch on Snoopy enable, which is probably going to be a bash script and just see exactly what it does. But we could just copy this one variable Etsy LD .so .preload. Uh, If we cat this file, we see it just puts the Snoopy inside of this file. And that's just going to say whenever a program is loaded that is a dynamically linked one, do an LD preload against this. We could edit like bash RC for a specific user. If you only want that user to be monitored, you could edit their bash RC file and do like export pat, uh, LD preload is equal to the file. But we're not going to do it that way. We're going to install it via this. So um, let's copy this file. So I'm going to do a CP this. Actually, let's make the home uh, harden, I guess, and CP this to harden. And then we're going to probably copy this one file. Is this just a file? Is that a sim link? That's a file. So we can just copy that to harden as well. And now we have both of those, which is important. And Snoopy itself also probably creates something in Etsy. We could have looked at Snoopy enable, but um, it's just going to be Snoopy.ini in Etsy. And that's just going to have some basic configuration stuff. So I'm just going to copy this file into Harden as well. And what we're going to do is uh, test out Snoopy. So it's already installed. It's probably going to be going into auth.log would be my guess on Ubuntu. Um, I'm going to do sudo su and we can go to var log. And then if I less auth.log, we see Snoopy has already been logging things. So right here, we can see my root UID zero is doing less auth.log. And I think this will be the SID that had done it. So if I do ps ef grep on 3010, we can see that is tracing um, my process. So pretty cool there. Uh, if we created a new thing, let's do echo ipsec. I'm actually not sure if this is going to get logged. I don't know if echo commands do. Uh, we can grep dash i ipsec auth.log and maybe grep for Snoopy as well. Uh, ipsec's a bad one. Let's do um, Please play Battlegrounds on Hack the Box. So we'll say this message and we can check this log. I don't think it's going to show. Did I put space in Hack the Box? I did not. So that's not showing. But if there was a flag, so let's do go back to root, make der, oh, opt is already exist. Let's do vi opt flag.txt and put a random thing and then go back to this session and cat op flag.txt if we now do a grep dash i oh we don't even have to do dash i i is case insensitive 
I would just do flag.text on auth.log. We can see the root session zero used VI to create flag.text. Uh, session 1000 used cat to cat it. And yeah, so it's a pretty awesome type of monitoring we have. And I'm sure you can understand how valuable this is going to be. But in case you don't, let's copy this over to our parrot machine, automate a quick install and hack the box and give this for a test drive. So I'm going to just X out of this session, go into our hardened directory and set up a simple web server after doing an IPP ADDR to see what our IP address is. We are 172.16.10.182. So I'm going to do python m http.server python 3-m and then make sure this IP address is in our clipboard. Then go over to our parrot machine and do a wget-r for recursive against port 8000. And that's going to download everything on this web server and place it into a directory that it's, it's IP. I'm just going to rename that to be secure. And then I'm going to copy that hbg.sh script I have, which we showed in the first Hack the Box Battlegrounds video I did. And I'm going to copy that, and we're going to call this secure.sh. And then we're going to edit this, so secure.sh. And we're going to put a scp to copy the um, LD preload file. So scp-o-o, -o, that's good. And then it's going to be secure slash, um, let's go in the directory, lib snoopy.so into root. And if we cat ld.so.preload, it'll give us where we want to copy it to. Right there. And then the second one, this will be an SSH. And we're going to run a few commands. So I'm first, I'm going to echo uh, that uh, user local lib lib snoopy.so into the file etsy ld.so.preload. So that one command should be done. And then the next thing we do is I'm just going to um, create this snoopy uh, ini file. And we can probably cat snoopy.ini grep-v for a semicolon and then grep period for anything. So the only thing that exists in that file is snoopy. So I'm just going to make sure that exists. I don't know if you have to do this, but um, if we screw it up, we may just hose all our castles, which would suck. So we can do echo snoopy into etsy snoopy.ini and that double quote and that should be good um we can do like service apache to restart to make sure apache gets it um, i'm sure there's other services we could restart uh, maybe service smbd restart as well i think that may exist on some boxes so we'll get some error messages when we do this, but uh, we don't really care about that. So when we go into a Battlegrounds, hopefully all we have to do is execute this script and we get some nice logging. But before we do that, um, let's test something real quick. I'm going to grep, uh, let's see, robots.txt. So let's grab robots text out of our log auth.log. I'm just curious if we'll see this. Uh, put the password in and we can see, do we have Python ever accessing it? Uh, let's try index.html. Index.html, less dash A, or maybe dash capital S, put it all in one line. And let's see, we can see our pseudo grepping for it. So it looks like uh, when we're doing this through Python, it may not be actually showing it. Uh, we could say 
grep index, and then maybe grep dash v uid zero because we don't care about root because we only want to see when Python does it. And let's see, one thousand file name sudo. Oh, it's grabbing our sudo. Okay. Uh, command is grep cwd this one's sudo so i don't think we're seeing it when python accesses it which is interesting um let's see do we have tmux we do i'm gonna do cd var log i'm going tail dash f off dot log python 3 and we can import OS, then os.system cat opt flag.txt. And we can see in real time we accessed um, flag.txt. So, what if we did this within Python? Instead of doing os.system, we do f is equal to open opt flag.txt and read and f dot read like this so now we can read the flag and we're not triggering snoopy so this is the one thing like i said always be careful about um knowing exactly how you're monitoring applications because the logging solution is not perfect we're using python this way and kind of bringing our own land i guess you could say not using the linker and snoopy is not catching it so again make sure you know exactly how your monitoring works. Um, the other thing I wanted to do is test the install process. So let's go to a machine and revert it. So snapshot, revert to snapshot. And we're going to try testing a deploy against this box because we know this one should definitely work because that's how Snoopy was compiled against. If this one doesn't work, there's no way Hack the Box will work. And if this one does work, it doesn't mean it's going to work when we test it out on a Hack the Box machine in Battlegrounds because it's always possible um, the way we compiled it is just not compatible. So let us sudo su and I'm going to cat um, etsy ld.so.preload and the file does not exist, so it's definitely not installed. I'm also going to edit um, SSH, SSH config. Um, I think we have to install uh, SSH or open SSH server. Is that what it is? Awesome, I think I was right. Um, maybe sudo apt update then install it. So, oh wait, I didn't do sudo. Let's do sudo two exclamation points to do the last command since I screwed up my history. Uh, sudo apt update. Oh, I don't have internet. sudo dh client dash i dash v. That should be good. Now we should be installing it. Yep. Okay, so we have SSH installed, so I should be able to v etsy sh. Uh, then sshd config and let's see there should be like a permit root login and we can say password it's either password or with password i think it's just password uh sudo system ctl restart shd uh service shd restart is it just ssh uh Let's do find Etsy grep SSH. And it's probably open SSH server. Oh, is it system CTL list units? SSH. Should just be SSH.service. And it's actually failed. So this was probably the correct command but it's probably with password. So sudo journal ctl dash xe. Uh, let's see. Stop job. 
let's just uncomment what we did. So V, Etsy, SSH. You know, it's always the easiest parts of the video that give me the most trouble. Uh, let's restart this. No complaints. So it's definitely this. So maybe it's um, with password or maybe it's yes. Uh, let's see. Permit root login. Yep. So no or without password. Let's see. Permit root login allow password. Maybe yes. <laughs> okay. Let's just try putting permit root login is equal to yes. And restart. That was it. Pass WD. I'm just going to put a password in. The password I just set was password. <laughs> Not the best, but it should work. So secure.sh. And we want to do an if config or IP ADDR, uh, 172.16.10.164. And the password is password. Okay, we have some errors. Uh, Apache failed and SMB failed, but the other things completed successfully. So I'm going to V opt, uh, we'll call it please subscribe dot text and say thanks for subscribing. And then we can cat what we just did. And now when we cat ver log auth, we're getting Snoopy things. So we can also grep that for, uh, what was the file called? Please subscribe. We should have got it, but that may be because this session hasn't reloaded bash. Um, I still would have thought like uh, opt would have called it, but it doesn't look like it. So let's exit out sudo again, and we will cat that, grab for it, and we can see since our bash session restarted, we can grab it. So knowing this, it's going to be key that you get into the system before the attacker does, because if they get a shell before you can install Snoopy, uh, you won't see anything. So again, always know what your monitoring solution does so you know the blind spots it creates. So with all that being said, we can go over back to a parent machine and queue up for a game and do some instant response. So we are now in a Battlegrounds lobby. Let's get ready by downloading the VPN and then we will get it ready to connect. So I'm just going to vbg.conf and we'll delete this file, paste the new one and do openvpn bg.conf. And it's important to note, we won't actually connect to a game until or connect to the VPN until all eight of these bars are green. So let's take a look at the teams. Team one is Crypto, Remcio, Nofix, and Mr. Know-It-All. Team two is going to be myself, uh, Shadow Quit or something, Tani Tarek, and Locust. So with some video magic, I'm just going to speed up to the part of the video where we can actually connect to the VPN because we still have four bars to wait. So it'll probably be like three minutes. I hear the little beeps, so it looks like the match is probably started. And we have an IP address. Let's see which one we are. We are 10, 10, 14, 2, so we have the home field May advantage. I'm going to start the battleground. And I'm also going to listen on port 9001 to see if we just randomly catch any shells. Let's go in dub 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 python 3 m HTTP.server 80. And we will begin herning our boxes. So we got 105, let's copy this password, dot slash secure dot sh, 1010 10, 105, paste, secure dot sh, 1010 10, 106, copy this password, paste, 
Let's go down here, secure.sh, 1010.107. Copy this password. And then we will do the last one, secure sh, 1010.1108. And I put the wrong password in, I never copied it. It looks like Tony Tarek may be trying to hide in this box. So when we get on, we'll see if he is also on this box. Uh, what? Let's retrieve root password and paste. There we go. So the next thing I'm doing is one of my favorite Tmux things that I've really only done in Battlegrounds. I'm going to do control B colon to enter this little command prompt and set W synchronize panes on. So now when I type, it goes to every single pane in this thing. So I'm going to hit up and we're going to delete secure and do HBG for hack the box battlegrounds.sh and we SSH into all my boxes. I can do the W command and we see two people are in every box, 10.10.14.6 and 10.10.14.2. I'm guessing 10.10.14.6 is Tani Tarek. So let's do VI notes, defenders, 10.10.14.6, Tani, 10.10.14.2, IPSEC, and it's just good to know IPs. So if we ever see something, we can always kind of attribute it. Um, let's just make sure the auth.log is working. So var log, or Snoopy is working. And I can see Snoopy on everything, which is good. Um, I'm going to grep nano, and we're going to grep vim, or vi, to see if anyone's using anything. Um, it doesn't look like it. Let's see. Tani was on, he said he's working on this box. So let's do a little bit of a troll. Um, one of my favorite things to do, let's just rename this command center. Uh, let's do dot slash hbg 10101108 and we'll grab his password. Okay. So what we want to do is go to user bin and we're going to move nano to nano.back and move vi to vi.back and move vim to vim.back. And now I'm going to copy nano.back to vi and vim uh, to vi and then we'll also copy it to vim and I'll copy vi to nano. So now on this box, if you run nano, you go into vim. Wait, no. Did I just reverse that? Nano dot back to vim. Uh, let's do cp vi dot back to nano. So yeah, now when you do nano, you do vim. When you do vim, you do nano. Uh, that's probably gonna troll me on later on this match when I go look at a file, but it's always fun. Uh, let's do a ss-anpt grep for 10, 10, 14. And all these time waits mean the socket is closed. We really only care for established. So I'm going to grep established. And we can uh, look at this. And we probably don't care about sshd because that's always going to show up because we're logged in. Uh, we could hide that if we do grep dash V 10, 10, 14 dot two, or if we look at a defenders six, uh, we should not see our SSH processes now. So let's do, uh, watch dash N one on this. And Let's see. Let's get rid of this one grep. So I don't think anyone's really, wait. Oh, we probably have to put this in quotes or something. I don't know if the watch command likes, um, yeah. Watch command doesn't like all these pipes without quotes. So now let's uh, grep dash V 10, 10, 14, two or six. There we go. So we see right here, there is something going on in this Java established to 10, 10, 14, nine, but it doesn't look like there's any shell or anything yet, but 
I'm going to assume 10, 10, 14, 9 is an attacker. So we're going to put 10, 10, 14, 9. And we don't know who this is. He is accessing 105, though. So I'm just going to put a note saying 105. And let's go back to our command center. We don't really see too much. We can go to 105, though. So uh, what IP address is this? This is 108. I'm just going to rename this to Glenna. And we're going to go to dot slash HBG, 10, 10, 105. And let's retrieve this password. Grab it. And let's see. Let's tail dash F var log Snoopy. Or not Snoopy. Auth.log. And we see a constant watch command. So I'm going to exclude this SID 20, uh, 540. So we can exclude this. And do we have it running twice? We can grep dash V2336. Uh, whoops. Or SID2336. There we go. So now I'm just looking at what's going on in this box, and we don't really see all that much. The one thing I kind of want to do that I did not do is a TCP dump. Uh, we can see another Java session. But I'm going to kill this. I'm going to do IP ADDR and everything. And it looks like everything has ENS160, which is good. So I can do a TCP dump. Dash I, ENS 160, dash S zero, so we capture the whole packet, dash W, uh, please subscribe dot PCAP. And now every box is doing a PCAP. The downside is we lost our ability to type. So what I'm going to do is remove that, and we're going to send it to the background with no hop. And then we just Round put one. this in quotes, Available and then put an and. Initiated. And... Uh, I don't think this one goes in quotes. So we'll remove the quotes here. And we're doing a PCAP on everything, and it got thrown to the background. So if I do a PSAEF grep for a TCP dump, we can see every box is doing a TCP dump. And the main reason I do that is because if they access the flag in a way that my LD preload kit can't see, I can still grab the PCAP and search for what they're doing. So let's go back and do the watch command to see if anyone has a shell. And that looks fishy. We have something on, um, I saw 9001 somewhere. No one accidentally sent us a shell, but someone is on this box. Uh, so let's go to 106. And this one is the very top one, which is Manuel. Uh, let's do dot slash HBG, 10, 10, 1, 10, 106 and see what this guy is doing. Whoops. So, paste the password. psaef dash dash forest. And we can definitely see a reverse shell. He's using Python, and it looks like he's actually uh, rooted this box. So he just hasn't submitted the flags, because we can see the call chain, and eventually he hits root. So one of the things I love doing to troll is let's do a find slash grep for pty.py. And I'm going to remove Python's two sevens, and we're also going to change Python 3.8. So I'm going to remove this file, uh, remove the pi file, and we're going to edit this. And for this spawn, I'm going to do uh, print ipsec sees you hoarding flags. Uh, find another PTY trick. So now if he runs this Python command, so let's just grab this and do Python 3-C. It's not going to work. So we can kill his shell. 5077, 5076, 5063, 5062. The enemy has owned a and as soon as we started doing that, he uh, submitted the flag. So let's see exactly what he's doing, if he did any type of persistence. The enemy has so I'm going to grep flag.txt on var log auth.log. 
And we can see in root, he did that. He also catted flag.txt and .ssh. But let's see what he was doing on this box. So grep this SID on verlog auth.log. And let's see. Here's where he is gaining access. Um, LS. He, he removed my PCAP. That is rude. Oh, man. So we can't even go in to do that. Um, catted flag.txt there. But... Yeah, he removed please subscribe.pcap. Why would you do that, sir? Why? Um, if we do this again, I wonder if we'll see him try to get the um, flag, but I don't see it. The next thing I'm going to do is grep on HTB. And this is actually a really cool trick. If you're ever concerned, like, how do I get a machine to go respond back to us um, or like go back from a hurt state? This Snoopy thing actually really helps you. So I'm going to do grep for the SID that did the health check. You can always see the health check begins with HDB equals one. So we can grep that on verlog auth.log. And we can see everything the health check did. If the health check fails, it stops doing checks. So we can show you by user bin. And let's move su to su.back. And then echo please subscribe to su. And we should see the last thing being ran, the next health check, is this. And we'll see we get fixed machines. Oh, did it already run? Uh, we get a message from root at HTB. So looks like he got back. But let's do a grep HTB. And we can see the next health check that we failed. So let's grep this round two for verlog auth.log and we can see where is it failing uh it actually failed at the key gen so this isn't something we did this is something he did on this box he changed the idrsa key and it's no longer passing a check so that's unfortunate but let's do some instant response so looking at this, IDRSA may have changed. So let's grep IDRSA on verlog auth.log. And we can see, let's see, this is probably the health check script with this SSH key gen thing. So that's not what we want. Let's do a W command. And I think he's going to be 10.10.14.4. So let's cat authorize keys and Mr. Know-it-all has put a file there. So let's remove this and see exactly what he did. So I'm going to grep authorized keys for verlog auth.log. Your team has owned a user. And flag. let's see this cut command. That's probably going to be a health check script. I would think um, that is me. That is me. So I don't know exactly what he did to put that authorized key file there. Um, let's do a find slash dash M min to show us files modified within the last minute. Let's do 15 dash LS to dev null. And we're probably going to have to remove a few things like um, the sys. So let's Your do grep dash V slash sys slash proc and slash run. These are just directories I don't like. There's a better way to do this probably within a find command argument, but uh, find is hard to use. There's so many ergs. It's just easy to pipe and do grep sometimes. So let's see at all the files modified. So let's see. We have root. We can do a type F. So dash type F. And there is a file in dev we saw. So we have dev.something.sh. So we probably should take a look at this. Uh, that's us installing Snoopy. Bunch of stuff in ver, ver lib. So I'm going to do a quick one on ver www html. Just see all the files here. We may want to take a look at this PHP script, 
but let's, or maybe uploads index.php. Let's look at something.sh, what this is doing. Um, oh, so this echoed to that file. So that's why we didn't see him write to authorize keys because we have something watching that, um, the dynamically linked libraries. And when we did it before, echo didn't show up in our log. So this is a way of hiding from our logging. So again, always know the blind spots of your monitoring, but that is why we missed the authorized key thing. So we can do RM on that and do a W. He is still root. Oh no, I think he's off this box now. So let's see, PSAF dash dash forest. Do we see anything fishy? We don't. So let's see how he got root. Um, I think it was a sysctl command, if I remember correctly, that we saw. For a log auth.log? No. Maybe it was a sudo. Let's cat etsy sudoers. And we can see he can run start stop daemon. So what we're going to do is grep start stop daemon on var log um, auth.log. And if we do a less dash s, it's easier to read. We can see the health check script is just running this and it stops after the file. So it's not checking for the wildcard at the end. So we can do something cheeky because he didn't do good persistence. Or at least we don't think he did good persistence. And edit Etsy pseudoers and say, has owned a user um, instead of this stir, we can say, don't you wish you laid persistence? And save that file. So now he shouldn't be able to use that pseudoers rule to uh, go back up and we shouldn't be losing points on that flag. The enemy has um, a root IP flag. ADDR 106. The enemy has Let's see. a machine. Round three. Is he 10, 10, 10, 14, 2 and initiated. I'm... 10, 10, 14, 6. No, I'm 10, 10, 14, 2. Let's see. Let's grep flag.txt on var log auth and see how we got in. So let's see. I'm guessing the date is right here. So this is the SID he is. So let's grep this on var log auth.log and see what he did. Cat flag, see bash. I wonder if this is root. Less pipe. Let's do a PSEF grep 9826. See, I'm not sure where that one started. So let's just do a less varlog auth.log. Go to, forget what that was. Let's go to this message. We can just go to this timestamp. And then see what happened just before. So let's see. We want to do grep notify. Let's see. I wonder if I can grep that time, the 13, out of that. Grep dash V UID zero. And we'll grep Snoopy to see what happened. Um, let's see. We have var dub dub HTML pinger and pinger ran something. I wonder if there's like a set UID binary he executed or something that we just don't see. Uh, 10, 10, 14, 6. Again, I think that is um, Tony. So I'm going to check. <laughs> you can't use nano. Tarek, are you 10, 10, 14, 6? So he was trying to run nano and couldn't. And that's him killing my PCAP. Um, 
I guess we can start PCAP again. So let's do, um, do we have TCP dump here? I'm going to set W synchronize panes off and I'm going to TCP dump and instead of dash, uh, just please subscribe. I'm going to put a period in front of it. So it's a hidden file and doesn't show up. And when he gets the flag next time, we're going to see if he actually, um, how he gets in, if we miss it. Uh, doesn't look like it wrote. Uh, weird. So I guess it doesn't like um, it beginning with a period. Weird. Hopefully he doesn't remove it this time. Um, what we could do, let's see. Where is that shell? That was in command center. Which RM, CD user bin RM, or user bin, move RM to not today. VRM bin SH echo, please don't delete my files. CHMod plus X RM. So when he runs um, RM test, it's going to say, please don't delete my files. So we'll see next time he gets in. But while we are waiting, has owned a root flag. let's see if we can figure out what he did. So I'm going to go to Verispool cron. I'm just going to do find dot to see if there's any cron tabs. Root has a cron tab. So I'm going to cap this to see. And he put a cron to keep editing his SSH key in here. So we finally found it. Let's delete this and CD slash root slash dot SSH RM authorized keys. Oh, I can't. <laughs> I trolled myself. Um, not today. <laughs> authorized keys. <laughs> uh. Your team has pwned. So hopefully that stops his persistence. Um, I'm going to your team grab has pwned a machine. cron tab out of ver log auth dot log and see if we can figure out how he edited it. Um, I think this is me. 1919. Yeah. So. There it is. This nano command right here is probably what he used. So let's look at this Sid and see what other things he did. So, well, he typed contab dash E, which opened up in nano. But let's look at this Sid verlog auth.log. And let's see. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Is this a health check script? Or maybe he ran linpeas or something? Let's see. Moving.ht access to something. Uh, avatar to dot index dot PHP. So he's laying a bunch of stuff here. So let's go to CD ver dub dub dub. HTML. Did I copy that whole path? No. Reset. I can do find dot grep index dot PHP. And let's see. CD pinger cat index dot PHP. I don't know exactly what he did here. Find dot dash M min five. We'll do 15. Uh, to dev null. We want to do a dash ls. We need a slash before dev. Now he's been modified within the last 15 minutes, 25 minutes, 45. Is our command wrong? Let's get rid of this to dev null. Uh, what? Um, Touch ipsec. I don't know why that's not. I know when I watch the video, I'm going to feel silly. Oh, 
I don't have a dash. Um, it's always important you do minus. That was looking for 15 minutes in the future. Uh, 15 dash type F. There we go. So here are files that have been modified within the last 15 minutes. Let's take a look at this. Um, let's see, direct access. I don't know what all this text is. Echo dash N, base64 dash D. So that doesn't look like anything malicious. Um, let's go back to the find. We can look at users 09.php and access denied, direct access. So chances are this isn't anything. Uh, looks like a cookie. So doesn't look like he's in it. If we go to uh, root cd.ssh, no more authorized key file. So I think we have him off the system. He may have catted that IDRSA, and if he did, then he'll be able to get back in. But we'll see if he actually grabbed that file. Been replanted. Good luck. Um, I'm going to set my synchronized panes on. So synchronize panes on. Your team has owned. And we're going to do another watch. Oh no. Um. There we go. That watch command, and see everything. Um, this looks like someone's go bustering us. I bet if we tail dash F on this box, we will just because of all these established and them going pretty quickly. Your team has owned a user flag. So that's the second box. Is that Manuel? Your team has that's Cordell. I don't think we have a shell on that yet. Um, IP ADDR. And we're going to try to fix that health check script, I guess. Availability check so we do have a shell. So I'm going to grep HTB on var log auth dot log, and we're going to see why this is failing. So grep this, and let's see. Again, it's doing some type of SSH key gen on this. So it probably wants to make sure a, has a um, file exists. Or it's grabbing um, this authorized key file and checking if it exists. So let's go to root.ssh. And I think we have to put this SSH key there. So v authorize keys paste. And now we should be good. Um, I think the guy deleted it because maybe this box got popped once upon a time. And if it did, then they can just SSH again with the key we just put in authorize keys. Or maybe I deleted it. But that check should now pass. The enemy has owned um, someone is fire. on 107. So let's see. IP ADDR. That is 105. This is by 106. That's 108. So I'm going to rename this to... Cordell, and we're going to go into 10.10.1.10.107 to see exactly how they got this flag. So first, I'm going to check battle log. Was this Mr. Reboot? If it was, I'm grabbing PCAP now. Uh, no, it's it's crypto. So let's do dot slash HBG 10.10.1.10.107. Paste. And grep flag.txt out of var log auth.log and we don't see anything. So you probably grab this through like directly from Apache or something. So let's do grep flag.txt out of var log Apache 2 access.log and we can see he definitely did do it that way. So I'm going to go to var www html and we're going to replay this. So I think I can do this through curl. So curl, I think it's path as is like that. Localhost um, slash lang dot p. Well, we can just paste now. Okay. If I don't do that path as is, it's not going to send all these dot dots. Um, so let's remove that flags to show you. Oh, it is going to work. 
Um, I don't know. Sometimes when I say things, just ignore them. But let's just edit this lang.php. And I'm going to say um, if s tier position uh, file is equal to flag. I think we have to do like that. And then we're going to echo. Um, let's see. What should we do? Ipsec says go for shells. Die. And there's plenty of ways he could get around this. He could like um, echo a command in base64, d base64, and go. Um, this is a very bad way to do a patch, but it is a fun way to do a patch. And when we are trying to learn red team by just seeing what other people do and how they react to us, if we patched it all the way, we wouldn't know what works. If we just do these monkey patches and just patch a small piece, then we're going to see how they adapt and fix it. Like, we probably should have done something with a base name or something to get rid of all these dot dot slashes. But again, I more just want to see how he reacts to this one thing. Has been reset. And when I cat this, it says ipsec says go for shells. So we made sure this script still works. And I'm fairly certain you can still um, exploit it. So we shouldn't have broke anything. Um, we're still losing points on 106. So let's go back to 106. And that SH key gen should be fine now. So I'm going to grep HTB on varlog auth.log and see what fail now. So grep this on varlog auth.log and user bin su failed. So I don't know if I moved su.back over top of su. Um, we ask you now authentication failure. So I think it's good. Round six. Uh, does this tell us the MD5 someone expects? Let's see. I wonder if this is the MD5 someone's expecting. MD5 sum SU 4DF. Yep. So I think this is the MD5 someone expects SU to be. So hopefully we now fix this one. Um, 107, we know how they got on the box, so that's not a worry anymore. Uh, let's go and check 105. Or let's go back to our command center and see for reverse shells. Um, let's just make sure they're, uh, they're busting this. So 106, Cordell, CD, ver log, Apache 2, tail dash F, access.log, and we can see there are a lot of things being hit. Like, a lot. Um, yeah. So someone's definitely hammering this box. Um, I'm just going to wait and see what people do. Refresh this so I know how long I've been doing this instant response thing and how much time we have left. But let's see what happens. We have someone accessing a flag on this box. So let's take a look at what they did. Um, they're on, is it Cordell? It is Cordell. So I'm going to grab flag.txt out of var log auth. And let's see. Oh, they also got root. It hasn't shown us they have root. Is this, um, who is this? Uh, Mr. Know-it-all. So he does definitely have that root flag. Looking at this, let's see. Cute news upload. So he's somewhere in this directory. If we probably go in here, we may see an upload script. Uh, ls. Let's look at index.php. Uh, what? That's an image. Uh, strings index.php. There he goes with his git um, f exec. So. He dropped an image, probably an image upload script, into this uploads and just put a shell on the bottom. Uh, a good way to get rid of shells is going into PHP's config, Apache 2, php.ini, and I'm going to go into 
the disable functions, and there's a bu bunch we can do. I'm only going to do system because I don't want to fully patch it, but like there's a bunch of ways to execute commands. The common ones are like exec, pass through, shell exec, and system, which we just blocked. You can also do like p open or process underscore open. And PHP also has like curl underscore exec or like curl multi exec. There's a bunch of functions that you may want to stop. But I just want to stop that one. So service Apache 2 restart. So now his upload shell is no longer going to work. Um, it's probably going to take a while to restart because someone is durbustering this page. So it's got to kill all those things and shut down quietly. So I'm going to dot slash HBH 10, 10, 1, 10, uh, 106, grab the password. Flags and have been replanted. Good luck. PSAF dash dash forest. Oh man, there's so much. Um, let's see. TCP dump. Is there a Python? Your team has owned a user flag. The He's still on this. CD dot SSH. Uh, cat authorized keys. Has owned a user flag. He has not put that there yet. Availability check initiated. Um. I'm just going to grab flag.txt on Your team has var log auth.log. And we're going to look at this SID to see what's happening here. Let's see. LS bin script. So he's doing something there. Uh, again, sudo start stop daemon. If I do sudo, or did we fix that? Cat Etsy sudoers. Uh, let's see. Admin can do... Yeah. So we somewhat fixed that. He doesn't have root here. So maybe he never got root. And he was trying to and failed. So psaf dash dash forest. See if we can find his reverse shell. Uh, I don't see one. ssantp grep 10.10.14. Uh, grab a stab. So many, not much noise to go through. Um, let's see. He's doing dash here. So let's look, do a PS and look at this PID. PSAF dash dash forest last dash s is this pid anywhere it is not Let's see date 3557 i think he's still on the box maybe he exited uh we do have this python pty is this the one we prevented that from i'm going to try running this command python 3 dash c Yep. So we stopped him from doing this. <laughs> you can see him probably getting frustrated right now, right there. Um, he didn't immediately. Oh, no, he did. Script is another way to go around this. Uh, PSAF dash dash forest less. And script will also get you around a TTY. So we can do CD bin. Uh, he probably did like dot slash script. Uh, probably I think it's dash Q dev null or something. I'm guessing is what he did, and that will get you a TTY shell. Um, let's move. Uh, we can probably RM script. <laughs> it's, uh, what is it? What do I name it? Uh, let's do CD, uh, which RM user bin grep2. I don't know what I renamed this to. Uh, find dot dash m in 60. Let's do. I really don't know what I renamed that to. Um, let's just go to bin and we'll do echo. Eh, we don't have to remove script. He worked hard enough to get that, but Again, that is just showing like when you remove one thing from them, you get to see what else they do. 
And I wish he was still on the system, but it looks like he got off the system and probably can't get back on. So he's probably hitting that index.php now and then getting an error message. So if we do ver log Apache 2, um, cat error.log, does this say? Yeah. So we see um, this error log of someone hitting the uploads. So here's another upload that we missed. Uh, this one's doing the same exact thing at the very bottom. It just runs this system command. Uh, we didn't see this. We just saw index.php. But because we just blacklisted system, it um, stopped all of his shells. So we stopped him kind of at one level that he didn't expect us to. So pretty cool way to do that. Uh, we can go for www html find dot dash and min 15 dash ls. Uh, we need dash 15. And we can see all the files he's adding. Um, he's telling us don't remove this. I'm not removing your shells, man. Uh, let's do cat. I actually can't remove it anyways. Uh, still doing system. So if he changed it to exec, it would work. But he has not yet. Uh, yeah, because I don't know how to remove on this box now that I did that. Uh, Round eight. I renamed our um, check initiated. So let's see. I wonder what happens when you execute that. Uh, can we curl local host on this file? An enemy machine has been reset. Is that going to give me a 404? Let's see. Use dash dash output to tell code output to terminal anyways. So we'll do dash dash output dash. Oh, um, let's just do temp inspect. I don't want to mess up my whole terminal by downloading and showing binary data. So we don't see anything of the uh, PHP command. It doesn't output an error message. So he probably has no idea that we just blocked system and he should be doing so. <laughs> I can't delete inspect. Uh, <laughs> I could just echo nothing to inspect, but he has no idea that we just blacklisted system. So should be fun. Um, I guess I can wait to see if anything else happens. We can go back to the command center and still doing this go buster on this. Um, you really don't have to. You can always SH into your own castle and just do LSs on the directory and understand what's going on. Um, let's see. No reverse shells. I think we are good. Oh, uh, this 106 is still failing a check. So, is this 106? It is. Let's grab HDB ver log auth.log. Grab this studding SID. And let's see. LSLA bin dash is where it failed. I did LS dash. See, it wants read, write, execute, XR. I honestly don't know why this one's failing. It looked like the health check script completed. Um, maybe it's something we did with Python, but no, I didn't delete either of those. It passed the SU. So that should go back to healthy, I think. Um, there's one other thing we could show. I guess we can grab the PCAP off this box and look at the flag. So cat opt flag dot text echo. And let's download it. So we can exit and SCP 1010 10, 106 stir dot PCAP. And we have to clear this host key. And I probably should do root at, and let's grab this. Whoops. Yes. Paste. And we are downloading the PCAP, which, oh God, because he did the dirt bust, it's going to be huge.
man, that backfired. Um, maybe we can do 101. We'll get there eventually. I'm assuming once uh, we even grab that, it's still going to be a pain because Wireshark does not like big files. So 10, 10, 1, 10, 105. Maybe Dove Austin has his place to slow down defenders. Good luck. Um, retrieve root password. We need stir.pcap. Your team has owned a user flag. Paste. Your team has owned a user flag. So we can now download, please subscribe, and look for flag.txt. So Wireshark, please subscribe, and we'll see if anyone got flag.txt. If not, I remember, uh, I think Fausto did. This is the one we did the um, lang.php trick on. So flag.txt, actually not there. Control F to open up the search. Search for flag.txt. Change display filter to string Round nine. and change this to packet bytes initiated. and search. We don't have anything here. So I don't think uh, we'll see it on this box, but we should go to the one we edited lang.php on, which I want to say was Fausto or Glenna. Let's see. CD ver dub 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 HTML. Uh, that does not look like it has lang.php. So let's go to 10, 10, 1, 10, 107. So SCP 107. We have to do this key gen. I should create like a script to download PCAPs. So let's download this one. And maybe we'll finish downloading the one PCAP wherever we have that running. You can see I'm not the most organized once the game starts. Wireshark, please subscribe. And let's see if they get flag.txt. So once this loads, control F, flag.txt, again, change to string, bytes, enter. And we can see them once it actually pulls, grabbing the flag.txt. Um, this is them doing an error. I don't think you need that file first. So they didn't actually get it there. So let's get rid of this. That was 9258, so we gotta go after 9258. So search for the next one right here. This one may be it. Follow TCP stream. Once it loads, there we go. So he fixed his command and he grabbed the flag. So we can go a few times and see if he ever goes and tries to grab um, flag.txt and sees my message. So he was 10, 10, 14, 9. So let's see. Is this one? And let's see. Response in frame 14160. We can go here. What is the response? That is the flag. So that's not it. Search for the next instance. This is probably the response right here. Yeah. So he is 10, 10, 14, 9. If we follow this stream, we can see him doing this and getting the message, Ipsec says go for shells. And that looks like he stopped doing it. Um, this is an include around this. So if we went to the box, uh, let's see, this box? No, uh, this, this box, the one I didn't name. If we go here, it is including a file. So if he had, found like an upload exploit, which I'm guessing there is one because there's an uploads directory. Uh, let's go into uploads. There's plenty of files here. Um, uploading a bunch of things. I don't know who's uploading this, but if he used that include around this, he would get a shell. Um, 
Let's see, what box is this? This is 10, 10, 14, 9. I'm just going to do him a solid and we'll execute it for him. <laughs> so he's got a shell. Uh, <laughs> let's see if he actually does anything with this. PSAEF dash dash forest less. Uh, where is this PHP? There he is. So he's this PID. Um, let's see. Let's cat ver log off dot log. I'm trying to find uh, where he is. Grep dash V UID zero. Uh, that's the W get from Apache. Um, I don't know if we see his SID yet. So I'm going to do tail dash F on this and we'll hide UID zero. And we're just going to wait for him to start interacting with the shell we sent him because he's definitely got it. But does he pay attention to the pain to know he got the shell? Who knows? Oh, oh, no. Uh, Your team has owned a three, four, two, one, four. Do not give him that shell. I executed that as root. Do not give him the shell. There we go. Uh because <laughs> I executed that shell as root, um, he got it. So it's probably just going to be something on his screen that shows a reverse shell returned as root, and then he won't know anything else. So let's see. Can we su dub 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 data bash dash c bash sudo dub 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 data php this uh, root is not in the sudoers file. What the Etsy sudoers? Uh, let's see. I wonder if I can just do root like that. I probably have to do. No pass WD. Is it here? I don't know if that's it. Um, let's see. Let's go back to my box. Cat Etsy sudoers. Sudo cat it. Um, all no pass WD all. All. No pass WD. Oh, there we go. Pseudo dash U. What? I thought I could execute anything. All equals no pass WD all. Oh, yeah, root all users, no pass WD, bash. Let's try this. And dub 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 data, bash. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, let's look at the chat, battle chat. How do you patch Cordell? I thought I covered my tracks. Uh, you did not, sir. You did not. So he still can't figure out how to execute his shell. Um, I just blacklisted system. So we'll see if he works around that quickly. Has been reset. Um, what machine got reset? Who's reset one? Oh no. We patched one. Flags have been replanted. Good luck. So it looks like. Okay, we're still losing points there, but we have to hurt in 10, 10, 1, 10, 105 again. Um, Your team has owned a. Let's go flag. up one directory, secure.sh, and we will retrieve root password. 
paste it in. And now we have Snoopy back on this box. So we should be getting good logs. And we can do hbg.sh. And I'm going to tail-f ver log auth.log. Uh, we can just do it on the command center. Your team has Let's see. a machine. The password's probably changed. So paste the password, the new one. And then control C. I'm gonna have to type this watch command again. Watch dash add one Your team SS. Has owned a user flag. Um A N P T grep ten ten fourteen grep established and we'll get rid of my connections and Tani's. If I can type, that would be great. So now we're looking at reverse shells. Um, 10.10.110.107 has an SSH connection on uh, this guy. And Round 11. don't know if that's an attacker or not. If we did a better job at labeling, we know exactly who that is, but we kind of stopped that. Um, so let's go over to that box. That is Fausto. I think that was pane five. Uh, IP ADDR 107 W. Well, seven is root. So I'm guessing that is a defender. Um, let's see. Let's. I guess just sit here and wait. We'll see if they get anything at the last second. Um, we can add seven to this exclusion list and see any shells. And we just have three seconds left until the game ends. Doesn't look like there's any shells to defend. Has lost. And I don't know why both sounds just played, but we are definitely victorious. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care and I will see you all later.